Yeah, it's your boy Joe Sia. Hot. I'm in a traffic jam right now. Um, it's bad. It's backed up. This baby hasn't moved in about a half hour. I don't think I'll be surfing this morning before school. I don't even know if I'll be getting to school, even though the school's just over there. Man, this is cocked. I actually don't know what the status is. Maybe I should turn on the radio. See if there's any updates going on. But the good thing is, if you're coming from, you know, south, traffic's slower, okay? But if you're coming from north, driving south, this is bad, man. Um, I've been parked here. This is um, Burley. So that's the Burley on-ramp getting on the northbound highway. And this is the southbound um, here just between Reedy Creek and Burley. And uh, it ain't it ain't looking pretty. People are look. I'm not the only one. There's people out of their cars here. People are concerned. There's not a lot of movement occurring. Um, you know, you know that feeling where you're like, I could have exited there and been on my merry way and surf Burley, but instead I was thinking, hey, I'll surf Karambit. You know, I like that long wave break. And man, that was mistake of the year, bro. Well, we don't know how long this is going to last for. Hopefully not long. But, um, man, you know that feeling when you're like, there's a bit of traffic, so you check how bad is the traffic, right? How bad is this going to be? And the, the, my Google Maps was like, this is going to be an additional seven minutes. I'm going to, I'm not going to lie to you. Google Maps, you're usually very reliable. Okay. I love you. I appreciate you. You're more reliable than Apple Maps. You are more reliable than Waze. You are more reliable than many applications. But in this one, you done me dirty, okay? You should have said, Josiah, exit there. Don't be an idiot. This could be a long, long traffic jam. But, um, dude, it's at the point where I'm like, if I, so I start work at, what, to, what time is it right now? I start work, I think it's like 6.30. So I start work in two hours. And I'm not confident. Like, even though my work is just there, I could technically ditch the car, right, and make it to work on time. Um, but then it's like I'm, I'm, I'm actually messing with an entire community, you know. So I, I, uh, I don't want to be like this, you know, moves, and I'm the only dude that. Uh, has a car left here, and then everyone's got to go down to one lane. I mean, I'd be at work, but I don't know the, the fine of that. I don't know what the status is. I just wish I exited. If you're thinking about driving on the southbound M1 this morning, I would strongly consider training, um, taking side roads. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be thinking something. I'd be thinking something other than what I'm doing right now. Um, I remember a couple of years ago, like a truck flipped over near Rabina exit. So the motorway closed, right? And um, I, I had to ditch my car, but I was parked where I could park, right? So like this isn't a park. Let me show you. This is not. This isn't a park, okay? So there's no, there's no shoulder here, okay? There's no, no availability to pull over and ditch the car, you know, there is just pure, um, dread, not dread. So people, man, wait, there are some people that are talking about, um, truck drivers doing a park up. I think they're angry at the government. I think they don't like what's happening. Apparently, I think they think, oh, the government's overstepping their authority. So they are like, doing a strike sort of thing. They're doing a something called a park up. I don't, apparently it was going to happen Tuesday, but I'm thinking, I, I mean, I hope not, you know, I mean, cause I, I mean, personally, if I was going to be parked, I'd rather be parked at Corumban beach surfing, not at Reedy Creek, uh, motorway. Just, I mean, that's selfish, right? But I think they're just trying to, someone said they're trying to make a stand or something. Uh, to tell the government that they're overdoing it. I think they're getting paid per load. 
and they're kind of waiting eight hours at truck stops, or sorry, at, at the border crossings. So their, their wage has been cut in half. So apparently they don't feel they're being heard. So they were, they were considering doing something that they did in the 1970s, which is just block every, um, every highway and just park. But they definitely have not blocked the northbound. So the northbound highway, it's a flowing here. It's a flowing. So the northbound's looking good, you know. They're doing their 80 thing. They're they're doing fine. This southbound now. So I don't know if the if the truckies are just blocking the southbound. But some people think that um I don't know, someone was saying that like some of the police were like pepper spraying a 12 year old or something. I don't know. I saw I saw something and um um some you know some police were like batoning people down in um, in Australia for like not wearing a mask and apparently the police weren't wearing masks. I don't know, but um, I think so, I think people are uh, upset about the whole Uncle COVID thing. I think they um, they're sitting there going, man, this whole they're not excited about the COVID, okay? But they're they're equally they're concerned that the government is sort of overreacting, I think. They think it's, um, you know, like, they think that the, like, Canberra locked down, I think, for one case, and it was a snap lockdown, which is like, I mean, that's a strategy, you know? Like, that's like a way. But then people are also going, hang on, but, you know, these lockdowns aren't very nice for me. Like, I don't love the lockdown, right? That's what they're kind of saying. So they go, hey, yeah, I don't like the COVID, but then... Um, you know, is there another solution other than the lockdowns or other than the border closures or things like that? And I don't, I don't know if people feel that way. So I think people are sort of um, annoyed, I think. And, and, I, and I think they're trying to um, figure out, like, you know, some people are going to these freedom rallies or, or, or whatever, and they're sort of protesting, like, for freedom. But it's like, other people are like, dude, what are you doing? You could be spreading COVID, right? Like gathering. But these people are like, hey, we understand the COVID thing, but uh, we, we like we're, we we don't love the COVID. But I think they they are saying we don't think lockdowns and limiting our like rights as citizens is the ultimate answer. So I think they're going, hang on, but we still have freedom to move, freedom of speech, freedom of this. It's like a rally. It's like any rally, like freedom of speech, unless it's like hate speech or whatever. It's like people want to say something, right? And they want to like feel like people are hearing them, right? And it's like, even if we don't agree, like even if, like if I saw a rally, you know, saying nuns want double the wage, like I don't know anything about how much nuns earn, okay? I don't even know if they earn money. I... I don't necessarily believe in the cause, okay? But if I saw them, like, protesting, I'd be like, oh, good on you, man. Like, you know, you're you're, you're kind of standing for something you believe in. Now, the weird thing is they could be spreading the COVID, though. So that's where it's, like, a weird thing. It's like, hang on, should we allow this rally? Like, and I think some people were getting arrested. Um, Ultimately, not everyone's happy with Australia. I've been, I've been living in Australia, you know, 15 years. And, um, even when my dad came here, he was shocked. Like he, he, we drove and we saw like, you know, 85 cameras taking photos of us. And my dad's like, geez, son, this feels like a police state. Like it feels like, you know, um, it's just like, uh, the surveillance and these things. And cause I think in America, like that kind of stuff is not legal. To, to, like, have surveillance and cameras, right? So unless you get pulled over by a police, you um, don't get a ticket sort of thing, right? Whereas here, it's sort of like, here's the ticket in the mail. And, I mean, you know, it's like in the name of um, stopping speeding, you know, which is a good thing. Like, I think speeding, most people think it's pretty dangerous. It's not, like, a great option. Um, I, I think there's stats on, you know, people speeding and, and more death tally and, whatnot. So it's not like I'm saying I'm for speeding, but there is this element that some people feel the government, you know, is a little bit overpowered. And I think, um, 
I don't know. Like, I'm not, a, I'm not an economist. I'm not a political scientist. I'm just, like, you know, piecing together what various people are saying, you know, and, like, trying to figure out, well, what is true. And, you know, but I, I try to listen to uh, varying perspectives. But, man, this could be, I don't know. Some people are commenting on here, truckies have blocked the highway bloke. Enjoy the wait from Nathan Black. That's awesome, Nathan. Thanks, dude. Grosso style. Man, the brother at La Cocomo. Bruder. Um, man, if you are... Oh, geez, sorry, man. I'll let you through. These guys have the right idea. Let's... How you feeling about it? I'm here for it. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah? Is this the truckies? Yeah. Wow, guys, I think it's happening. A park up? Yeah. Uh, and, and how long do you think it's going to go for? Well, we have been a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks. So I'm, I'm probably going to park my car here for two weeks, right? Unless I can move everything from the back door. Yeah. I, I wish I exited. <laughs> Why does I exit? Guys, this guy, we're, 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 I thought it was going to be Tuesday, but they moved it forward. Yeah. Wow. Are they going to do the, the, the northbound? I don't know. Jeez. Yeah, we're not, he's not a traffic Scientologist, but, you know. No, good on you, man. All right, well, enjoy, are you all right? Enjoy the cause, or whatever, yeah, whatever you're trying to do. Yeah. All right, man. Have a good one. Yeah, guys. So I, I don't know. Apparently, it's it's a thing. I think. I actually don't know. I can't confirm, but I can confirm. I'm not going to Karamba. I I can definitely confirm that. Um, I can confirm people are upset. I think. Um. I don't know who's 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 right and who's wrong. I think it's um it's weird times this whole COVID thing, you know? Like um Yeah, like we don't know what's the um outcome. It's uncertain times. Um people are feeling scared of the COVID. People aren't really trusting the government, they're not really trusting um news. People are sort of um like mental health, I think some people are saying that, you know, things like depression and suicide are up. And so even though the lockdowns might stop the COVID, it's like not going to help you with your mental health, right? Some people are saying. And um, yeah, I think the border closures, I think, I think the truckies want just more money, right? Like I think the truck drivers are sitting there going, hey, can we get some kind of hourly wage? Or can we get, um, you know, something where it's like a fair um, sort of equitable return on on um, what we believe in, you know? Um, which is pretty full on, man. It's like, I think in Canada, the garbage truck guys in Canada would, would like just stop collecting garbage and like everyone would just have garbage bags on their lawns and whatnot, and it was like rough, man. And you're like sitting there going, "Wow!" Like I really appreciate what the um, garbage guys do. Like they get rid of, you know, my garbage, which is great, right? And I think like maybe these truck drivers are sitting there going, "Hang on, you're not going to get your food. You know, we're going to park up. We're just going to um, chill out and do, you know, whatever sort of thing." Um, but I think this is a weird situation because, like, could I be parked here for two weeks? I mean, I, I could be. I'm set up for sort of pseudo camping, right? So I've got, I've got my, uh, tent. Come on, tent. Where are you? Oh, geez. I got a tent here. Oh, what's going on here? I got my tent. Okay. Got a sleeping mat. Got a little cooker. Got a chair I could sit in, you know, got my Bible, got a little uh, coffee cooker set up. I might just brew up a cup of coffee. I got a little little jet boil, little, um, what's it called, little kitchen back here. You know, I can, got my little um, coffee scales. Um, man, I could, I could be brewing up some mean brews here, you know. And hanging out for two weeks on the highway. Wow. Wouldn't that be wild? Um, yeah, thanks, Dan. 
Dude, I, I could be a little bit late for school, to be honest. Let's see what happens, eh? Um, Beck, yeah, they're not happy about the forced jab, I think they're saying. Lockdowns, tyrants running the country. Thanks, truckies. Yeah, people feel that we're under tyranny, like we're under um, the government um, maybe is, you know, controlling things too much. Um, read 1984. Something happened in 1984. Uh, Dina, stoked. They have they have the bra to go do it. Are you going south southbound, Lee? Southbound, bro. So, so the southbound is... Um, Southbound ain't moving. How are you, bro? We're on here. How, how does this guy feel? Another day in paradise. Well, I'm apparently having a barbecue up there. So I'm are they? Apparently. Bit of a sausage sizzle? Apparently. Wow. Brecky. Yeah, so I'm just going to go get me a coffee and... Yeah. Yeah, mate. As well, well they're going to be a... Four, I'm apparently calling the right, right squad, calling it on the two-way. Are they? And What's the two-way? What does that mean? On the radios. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like the... the Right, right. Yeah, apparently they're calling in a riot squad, and I don't know how they're gonna get cranes. How are they gonna move the trucks though? They're getting cranes in apparently. How are they gonna get them then? This is an official. I could be late for work. Oh yeah, I've really... if, if my boss is watching. You're okay. He's okay. He's I'm, okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm. I've read what my, my boss goes. Don't worry about it. I, I went. Well, am I gonna get paid? He goes, no, and I'm like, oh, okay. Are you a trucking? No. No, no, I do, right. I do construction just up here, though. So. Yeah, because some people, yeah, apparently the truckies aren't happy. Well, no, nah, because they, if you think about it, it's all independent, yeah, it's independent companies and that, man, there, yeah. you know? And they do move, you know, import, export, all yeah. that, whatever they're bringing in, so. Yeah. You know? Wild. Is this happening all over the country or just here? Or? Uh, apparently, it's, uh, I know it's all, I think it's all over the country. I think wow. it's, I thought they are going to start tomorrow. That's what I was told. Yeah. They, 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 they must Instead be... of a head fake, they're starting today. Yeah. Well, sausage sizzle, how many meters up there? I don't know, but well, I know there's a, there's a count six up the right here. It's going to get me a coffee. Oh, today. yeah? I know they're up, I know, and apparently, yeah, on the two ways, like, yeah, they got the barbecue out. And yeah. Feet, so. I might even set my tent up. Well. Set a lift. <laughs> how are you guys going over here? We're going to interview some of the local citizens who are affected. How are you? Not bad. We're li I'm on Facebook Live right here. Yeah, How do you guys feel about? Is this a tr truck thing? You think? Yeah, uh, that's that's to yeah. go across the border. Right. So you need a vaccine across the border? Yeah. Um, both what? Just Queensland way? Oh, mainly Queensland. Yeah. Wow. How long do you guys think we're gonna be here? Yeah. You guys are trying to get to work? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Jeez. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I was trying to go for a surf and then get to work, but I should have gone Burley. I was thinking Burley or Karambas, and I've gone Karambas thinking, ah, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. This is, um, wow, it's a big day. I, I, I stopped the engine. Apparently, the, the truck drivers are talking on the, um, what's it called? Two-way radio, I think, saying, um, you know, this, and they're bringing in the riot squad. That's what that guy just said. But there's a there's a Caltech up there, they said, so they got a, you can get a $1 coffee, I think, if you're lucky enough. I might have to call in sick. Hey, what up? Um, they won't do it north because New South Wales let them in, but Queensland don't. Right. So, so they, um, so I think they're saying Queensland, so in order to enter Queensland, you have to have a jab, I think. Um, um, I don't know which one. I think there's the Astra, AstraZeneca, AstraZeneca Hine. AstraZeneca and the Moderna and the Pfizer. The Pfizer, I think, is, um, I think it depends on your age. I think if you're, um, if you're sort of like um, under the age of 30, I think that AstraZeneca is risky for 
blood clots or something, some kind of um, real bad men, um, a health thing. And then I think the Pfizer, some people are saying, uh, it, it just got approved by the FDA over in the States, which I was like excited about. I'm like, oh, wow, like uh, it's approved. And then some people were saying, well, that was just political. Um, that, it, it, you know, apparently vaccines take, you know, years to look at the long-term consequences um, of it. And, um, yeah, so it's sort of like, dang, man, dang. And, um, wow. So people um, feel that it's uh, a lot of weird stuff going on. And I think some people don't feel comfortable with, like, putting the vaccine in their body. You know, like they don't know it's it's new. Like I think we were told originally, hey, you know, guys, our vaccines are two or three years away. That's how long they take to develop and test and approve. And then I think when they kind of rolled out vaccines a year later, people were a bit like, oh, like I thought they said it was going to take two or three years. Um, and I think people feel like oh, I don't know about these products, you know, like are these products super good? Are they sketchy um and and some people um you know like like there are extreme opinions either way there are there are opinions like it's it, it could kill you right there are um like other opinions that you know who cares kind of thing so that there's divided but i think the issue is the forcing of it i think if you want to go get a vaccine go for it you know but um but, it, but I think these people are feeling like, if you're going to force me to get a vaccine, um, I don't want to be forced into doing anything. I, I just want to, um, you know, um, basically um, choose what I put in my body, you know. And I think some people don't feel comfortable with it. They don't um, love it. don't love the idea of it. And... Um, even though other people are like stoked that this could be the way that we get back to normal. This could be the way we beat the COVID. But I think other countries, you know, with the Delta, um, like are still getting COVID. They're still, you know, um, spreading the COVID. People are still getting really sick. I think it's helping from, from what um, some people are saying that it, it's still, even though the, the vaccine is probably more for the alpha, the original COVID. And it's not actually suitable to the Delta, I think, um, because it's a new strain, right? So we sort of need a vaccine for the new strain. And I think this is the old one. And apparently it helps. Um, I think it reduces effects or reduces deaths or something the government was saying. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I, people don't trust what the government is saying right now. They're, they're sort of like, why are you forcing this? And. But I think the government's sort of in like a tricky position because it's like we kind of live in this way where like these um, – you reckon we're moving? Are you sure? But, dude, how many people are out of their cars? That's That's the thing. Like at what point do we leave the car and then we're the problem, right? I don't see movement, but people are saying there's movement. Oh, I'm seeing some, some sort of movement. I'm not saying a surface guarantee. Is that just people coming on the highway? I'm just trying to think, is this actually... No, oh, there is movement. There is movement. It's moving, I think. This guy's, I think the guy, guy had a TikTok hat or something. I'm going to get in the car, put this thing on a... On my uh, dash here. Guys, this is crazy times, man. Mr. Malum, if this moves, I'm going to come to work. All right? I, 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 I'm I not trying to get out of work here. Um, Yeah, but guys, this, this whole um, vaccine, I think people are, like, um, grieving, like, what they've lost. Right? They're kind of sitting there going, oh, my goodness, this is terrible. Um, you know... Like, this isn't a good thing. Like, I can't travel. We can't, um, you know, we can't hug each other, kiss each other. You know, imagine if you're an Italian community, you can't, you know, you're scared to now give Nona a kiss or, 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 or whatever. 
um, you're scared to give, um, you know, a, a cuddle to Zia or Zio and, and, you know, because what if you get the COVID and, and she's older and, you know, I could kill grandma just by loving her. So people are like worried about the whole COVID thing. But then I think now it's sort of like, well, the COVID is maybe not as, uh, as lethal as we originally thought. I think, I think in some countries originally, like it was scary what was going on in Italy. And, you know, I think, it, I think Italy had like a 10% death rate at one point. Um, yeah. And people were really scared, but I think now it's like a 1.3% death rate. I think 98.7% of people make full recoveries. I think that means 1.3% dies, which is terrible. I'm not saying that's a good thing. It's not like the COVID's great. Um, I don't think people like the COVID um, just in general. Is there going to be any way for me to, I don't know if this is going to, we're moving somewhat. I just don't know how far we're going to move, like whether I sort of illegally exit through that Caltex just to get off this um, motorway or whether this is flowing. I'm not watching the news. Um I'm not listening to the news. I'm talking to you guys, you beautiful humans. But wow, Australia is not happy. This People don't trust the vaccine. Well, people, some people do, but some people don't like the government saying you have to have it, right? Like it's like, it's like a forced thing. But then other people sort of feel um, that, well, um, Man, I really just don't want to be on this motorway anymore. Um, <laughs> other people sort of feel like um, I don't feel comfortable. I'm not. I'm not sure, right? I'd rather kind of see how it is after like a couple years and see, you know, what are the effects of all these things that we haven't thought of. Um, you know, what is happening there? Um, yeah, I think I'm going to do what that guy just did. I think I'm going to pull a little Yui and just get off the M1. I'm not, I don't love the M1. That guy's got a Red Bull. I don't know where his car was parked. He's, um, I don't know if the police are going to let me do this exit. I might just, I, I want to ask them. I just, I don't, I don't know if we can, there's some people, there's police out here. I don't want to get a phone saying, oh, people are protesting here. So that this is, there's cameras. The police are here. They're saying something about the choice. Pro-choice, not anti-vax. So they're saying, hey, the vax is all good, I think they're trying to say. I'm going to, I don't, I don't know if I trust this, though. I just kind of want to. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I don't want to get arrested though. Maybe I'll make that next exit. It's flowing, so it should be going, right? Uh, I just, if I see brake lights, man, uh, all right. Anyway, we're going, we're rolling. Um, so yeah, people don't feel like great about it, right? Like they're kind of, and then the government's like in, in Israel, I think they've rolled out the green passport thing. So if you've got a couple of jabs, you can move freely and you just kind of show this passport thing. Um, like I actually have a vaccine passport when I went to Uganda and Mozambique, um, in order for Australia to let me back in, I had to show them that I had the yellow fever vaccine. Um, see, this is. Please let me off. I won't go to Karamban. I'll go somewhere else. I just don't want to be on this highway anymore. I can go check out Burley Point, see if the waves are cooking there. <laughs> oh, praise Jesus. I'm off the highway. Wow. Uh, there were people protesting there on the, on the exit saying that they're pro-choice, not anti-vax. So they're saying, I think they're trying to say, I, I don't feel, you know, super strongly against the vaccine itself. 
I just feel super strongly against being forced and not having the choice to do something you're not comfortable with. I think people are scared, man. Like they're sitting there going, I could lose my job. I could be really affected if I don't get this vaccine. It could cause me my livelihood. You know, people are worried. They they don't they don't um, they're feeling like their future could be compromised if they don't do this thing they actually don't want to do. Like they don't feel comfortable with. Like I know, like for certain people with health things, like um, like my my dad's doctor over in Canada said, "Damn, like." Um, it's genuinely, it's just not safe for you to take this vaccine because my dad's susceptible to blood clots and things like this. And so I think for my dad, he's not like lining up to get the vaccine, right? And um, man, there is weird stuff going on in Alberta and Canada. I don't know. So in, I'm from this province of Alberta in Canada. I'm born in a city called Red Deer, Alberta. There's not a lot going on there. So some people call it dead deer because of the inactivity, but uh, I'm from there. And, and that, that province has just outlawed, um, they've outlawed or just stopped testing for the COVID because they said that the COVID, um, the COVID tests aren't all that reliable that um, is, is, is what Alberta feels. So they feel that, um, I think the I think the way the COVID tests work, guys. I'm not a microbiologist by any means, or an epidemiologist. But I, uh, what I heard is that um, they take a swab out of your nose or whatever, and then they they put it through a series of multiplications. Could have, I could even give that word wrong? So it kind of multiplies what's there, and 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 tries to show it. I think because COVID doesn't come up, it's such a subtle thing. I think, and so they multiply. And then they it goes through a, a, a series. I think it was you know six to eight. Months. Eventually, you get these results where people are saying they have the COVID and they actually didn't. Um, and you get so in like a say you have a thousand tests, you'll get a series of people that did not have COVID that said they do. And the scarier thing is you'll get um, results that people have the COVID and they've come back with a negative result. So it's like, um, like you picture, like say that, you know, they did a snap lockdown in Canberra over that one case, right? Um, you picture that person, actually it's a false result, potentially. If, if the testing isn't as reliable as we thought, it could be a false result. So it could be a bad thing as in Canberra might not have had the COVID at all and they've just locked down you know so I think Alberta's gone no we need a better testing system this is too sketchy it's 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 not as good um which people are wa- wa- weirded out at I think Singapore did this thing where they just said we're not testing for COVID we're not um treating COVID from what I hear we're not looking at COVID, we're just going to pretend like it's a general sickness like the flu, and we're just going to return to life. Now, that that could be very old news. I heard that a couple months ago. That's what someone told me. I didn't fact check that. But I, I think some countries are kind of sitting there going, all right, well, what is the um, what is the cost benefit? Because I think originally for me, even, I was pro lockdown. I was like, yeah, man, if we save one person's life, you know, I think it's worth fighting for. I think it's worth, you know, um, locking down. And, and then now you kind of sit there and you go, well, all right, it's not as deadly as I thought. It's still deadly, right? It's still killing 1.3% of the people that get it. It's not a great thing. It's a terrible thing. Like human life is sacred. Like we're created in the image of God. You know, it's just a, like, it's important to, to fight to preserve life and to, you know, especially if people don't know Jesus, extend their life. Give them a chance to know Jesus, you know. Like get someone that genuinely loves and cares for them to preach how much God loves them and how much Jesus 
you know, actually loves you through your sin. And not just that, not just loves you through it, but actually was an active part of like dying and taking your sin on him and dying for you and then being resurrected to new life, conquering death, conquering sin, um, rising. You know, he resurrected so that you can have a new life in him, that you can meet Jesus and have a brand new life. And I think that's the end game. The end game isn't, you know, to live to your 120. I mean, if you find Jesus when you're 119, yeah, amen, live to your 120. You know, but I think it's about meeting Jesus. I think it's about the eternity. It's, it's, um, but, but human life is sacred, man. Like it, it, it's a beautiful thing. Some of the things with medicines and, you know, I think, um, from what I hear, we, we pretty well beat polio and, you know, the measles killed like, um, and smallpox killed like 90% of, um, central and South America, like terrible diseases that were you know, had massive death rates. And, you know, some people talk about the Spanish flu. Those things are scary, man. Like, like when Mexico, when, when, you know, Hernan Cortez and the boys arrived in Mexico and, you know, they're like, Hey, come on in to Tenochtitlan. They're carrying measles. They're carrying smallpox. They're, they killed people, man. Like it killed people. And, um, you know, it's brutal. Like, They should have locked down, right? Like they should have quarantined. They should have closed their borders because they didn't know 90% of their people were going to die. Like they needed a lockdown now. They, they, they did like legitimately, um, hundred percent. Right. So there are moments where I think we need this stuff. I think, I guess the tricky thing is, is if people don't trust the government, if people don't trust the news sources, you know, and what happens if, um, people start so not trusting the government, they're not even willing to lock down when a really serious virus comes, you know, and then we can't react quick enough. We can't slow down the spread. And imagine if, you know, I don't, I, I'm not trying to be a prophet of doom here, but imagine if a, if a virus came that killed 90%, like smallpox and measles did. Um, and, and we weren't able to lock down because we didn't trust the information sources. And that's like the scary thing about crying wolf, right? You, yeah, you can lie to get a result a few times, but ultimately you got to tell the truth, man. And you got to, you got to be able to sit there and say, guys, this is serious, you know? Um, and not that the COVID is not serious, but there's other things, right? There's mental health. There's like helping people through suicide. There are a billion different aspects of human life that need to be looked at and cared for in a way. And, um, wow. Wow. Oh yeah, man. These guys were talking about me being there for two weeks. I think people were really supportive of the, um, the truck drivers making a stand and not just the truck drivers, but people saying, you know, that they didn't want the vaccine and whatnot. And, um, as in not even not want the vaccine. I think they were saying we're not just um, pro anti-vax. We are pro choice of whether to get the vax. It's, you know, um, kind of thing. Guys, oh yeah, um, I'm just going to show you what I was missing there. I could have been parked on the highway for two weeks. Instead, I wanted to show my community where I live, bro. This is Burley Heads. This is what I missed. It's a beautiful morning, man. The waves are cooking. Some of these guys probably didn't even know about that highway lockdown. That guy's on a right wave. Wow. Surfer's paradise in the distance. Wow, dude. This is beautiful. Jeez, it's clean out there. That westerly wind. That westerly wind. Dang, guys. Look at that. Wow. This is... A bit more peaceful than the whole motorway being shut down, hey? (laughs) Jeez, guys. Anyway, boy, guys, Jesus loves you. If you like this video, hit that like button. Smash that subscription. As always, it's your boy, Josiah. We're out.